Welcome to this health and wellbeing event webinar on eating well for health. The content and information provided in this webinar will be useful to anyone living with and beyond cancer, their carers and families, and will provide advice to support self-management of diet and nutrition, to promote positive lifestyle changes, and to signpost to other relevant resources and services. My name is Anna Orme and I'm a Macmillan dietitian and today I'm joined by Sarah Adamson who is a dietetic assistant practitioner and Chloe Fippin who is also a Macmillan dietitian. We work within the Department of Nutrition and Dietetics at Somerset NHS Foundation Trust and Yeovil District Hospital NHS Foundation Trust. Today's webinar will provide an overview of the link between diet and cancer eating well for good health, and diet myth busting. It's important to remember that everyone is different and may have different nutritional needs and concerns. These can vary as a result of the type of cancer and or type of treatment you've had, eating patterns and preferences, symptoms and any long lasting side effects of treatment, other medical conditions, and social, cultural and religious factors. We'll be highlighting foods that help to support good health, as well as identifying those that are less useful. The link between diet and cancer. So experts think that up to one in 10 cancers in the UK may be linked to diet, although we still don't fully understand how diet affects our risk of cancer and research is ongoing. Research suggests a lack of fruit and vegetables and being overweight may contribute to some cancers. And while some foods and aspects of our diets may increase our risk of cancer, others may be protective. Eating well and being a healthy weight. A balanced diet and regular exercise can help to keep us a healthy weight and maintain good health, to maintain or regain strength, have more energy, increase your sense of well-being, reduce the risk of new cancers and other diseases. Taking steps towards eating well can give you a sense of control by focusing on something positive that you can do for yourself. But making changes is not always easy and can be more challenging when you or someone you know has had to cope with cancer and cancer treatment. It may take time to make changes that work for you and give it time to see changes. It won't happen overnight. Don't try to change too much at once and don't be discouraged if on some days you're unable to follow some of the better choices. Small changes have the most impact. Making small changes to the food you eat every day can make a big difference. Keeping track of progress can be useful and a way of reflecting back on how far you've come. Before making dietary changes, it can also help to talk to your GP, specialist nurse or other healthcare professional. A balanced diet. So this is a diagram that we refer to as the Eat Well Guide. It's a visual representation of how different foods and drinks can contribute towards a healthy balanced diet. If you are well, have not lost weight and have no ongoing symptoms from your treatment, you are advised to follow a healthy balanced diet. From the Eat Well Guide, you will see that a daily balanced diet includes Lots of fruit and vegetables, which contain vitamins, minerals and fibre, and we should be aiming for five a day. Plenty of starchy foods, and these are carbohydrates such as bread, rice, pasta, noodles and potatoes, which are a good source of energy, fibre, minerals and B vitamins. Protein rich foods such as meat, poultry, fish, nuts, eggs and pulses such as beans and lentils. And these are important building blocks for cells, bone, muscles and all the functions of the body. Some milk and dairy foods such as cheese and yoghurt and these are a good source of protein and calcium and other minerals which are important for our bone and muscle health. Use oils and spreads in small amounts and aim to have good fats from vegetable sources such as olive and rapeseed oil, nuts and seeds. Aim to have a small amount of foods high in fat, salt and sugar. Drink plenty of fluids and this is usually between six to eight cups or glasses a day. 
and nutrition labels can also help you to choose between products and keep a check on the amount of food you are eating that may be high in fat, salt and added sugars. Portion sizes. The Eat Well Guide shows how much of what we eat overall should come from each food group to achieve a healthy, balanced diet. It is important to be aware of portion size as too much or too little of any type of food can increase our risk of health problems. Using your hands can be an easy way to measure food portions. For further information, both the British Dietetic Association and British Heart Foundation have useful information on portion sizes available on their website. Alcohol recommendations. There is strong evidence that alcohol is linked to an increased risk of developing certain types of cancer. The more alcohol someone drinks, the greater the overall risk to health. Health guidelines recommend that both men and women should not drink more than 14 units per week. It's best to spread the units evenly over three or more days. And you should also have several alcohol free days each week. Remember that one drink isn't the same as one unit of alcohol. And a large 250 ml glass of wine contains three units. Alcoholic drinks also don't count as a drink to hydrate you and are often high in energy, which can lead to weight gain and low in other nutrients. Alcohol can also interact with some medications, so always check with your pharmacist or doctor if you're unsure. Keeping to a healthy weight. A healthy weight is based on the ratio between your weight and height. This is known as your body mass index or BMI. BMI categories tell us whether we are underweight, within a healthy range or overweight. But please remember, it is only a guide and is not always accurate for some groups of people. You can use the online NHS Choices BMI calculator to work out your BMI and find out which group you fall into. Another useful indicator of whether you are healthy weight is to measure your waist. This is because your risk of getting some health problems is affected by where you store your body fat as well as by your weight. There is information on how to measure your waist on NHS Choices and the British Heart Foundation websites. A healthy waist measurement is less than 31.5 inches or 80 centimetres for women and less than 37 inches, 94 centimetres for men. What can I do if I'm overweight? So a weight loss of between one to two pounds or a half to one kilogram a week is a safe and realistic target. Eat a balanced diet as per the Eat Well guide that we discussed earlier and plan ahead to help ensure that you have the right foods to hand at the right times. Aim to be more active. Moving your body around means that you're using up more calories than if you're sitting down and every little helps. Realistic goals are going to be more achievable and seeing success will boost your confidence in your ability to lose weight. Bad diets are not sustainable and once you stop, the weight can return back on easily. Remember that there is no quick fix. People who successfully lose weight and keep it off make their new lifestyle and activity habits an enjoyable way of life. What can I do if I'm underweight? The first goal is to aim to stop losing any more weight. Keeping a stable weight can also improve your quality of life and ensure that you are able to live as normally as possible. You'll need to relax some of the healthy eating principles we discussed earlier and use some building up suggestions by following a high energy, high protein diet. If your appetite is reduced, it's important to make the most of each mouthful of food. And there are several ways you can do this. Choose foods high in energy, such as whole milk and cheese. Fortify or enrich your food by adding cream, butter or cheese to foods. Eat regular snacks and puddings, such as yogurts and custard and drink nourishing fluids such as milk, milkshakes and malted drinks. Try not to put too much pressure on yourself to gain weight. The most important thing is to prevent weight loss. You may find it easier to set gaining weight as a longer term goal, as it can sometimes take time. If you're still having persistent difficulties with your eating, and especially if you're losing weight unintentionally, it's important to inform a member of your healthcare team and ask for some individual support. Now we are going to focus on exploring some common diet myths. Are superfoods protective against cancer? 
The term superfood is used to describe foods with apparently special health-related powers. But the term superfood is really just a marketing tool with little scientific basis. A healthy, balanced and varied diet can help to reduce the risk of cancer, but it's unlikely that any single food will make a major difference on its own. Do I need to take vitamin and mineral supplements? There is currently no strong evidence that dietary supplements can help to treat or control the growth of cancer. For most people, a balanced diet will provide all the nutrients that you need, and taking vitamins, minerals and other dietary supplements is not necessary or recommended. It is important to remember that some of the vitamins and minerals can be harmful when taken in high doses and can react with some medications. Supplements do not substitute for a healthy diet, although some people may be advised to take them at certain times in their lives, for example, folic acid for women planning to have a baby, or vitamin D supplementation for certain groups of the population. For people who are unable to eat a diet with enough nutrients, and want to take a supplement, then a standard multivitamin and mineral supplement that contains approximately 100% of the daily requirement can be considered. It's important to inform your doctor, specialist nurse or dietitian before you start any dietary supplements to confirm that they are safe for you to take. Does sugar feed cancer? So there's no strong evidence to suggest sugar directly increases cancer risk or cancer progression. Sugar is a carbohydrate, and carbohydrates can be divided into the following categories. Simple or free sugars, which can be naturally found in foods such as fruit and milk, or added to foods and drinks such as sugars found in biscuits, sweets and sugary drinks. Or starchy complex carbohydrates such as bread, rice, pasta, breakfast cereals and potatoes, and these provide fibre and other nutrients as well as energy for the body. All carbohydrates, whether from a cake or a carrot, are broken down in our digestive system to provide glucose and absorbed into the bloodstream to provide energy for us to live. All our body cells, cancerous or not, use glucose for energy. And there's no way of telling our bodies to let healthy cells have glucose, but not to give it to the cancer cells. So our body doesn't get to pick and choose which cells get what fuel source to use. It is, however, very sensible to limit sugary foods as part of an overall healthy diet and to avoid putting on weight. Sugary foods like cakes, confectionery and fizzy drinks are often high in calories but low in other nutrients. And this can result in increased weight gain and body fat, which are known risk factors for many cancers. Do I need to avoid red meat? The World Cancer Research Fund recommends that if you eat red meat, such as beef, pork or lamb, you should limit consumption to no more than three portions per week. There is strong evidence that eating red meat and processed meats increases the risk of colorectal cancer. Three portions is equivalent to about 350 to 500 grams of cooked red meat. This is around 700 to 750 grams of raw meat. But the exact conversion will depend on other things such as the cut of meat, the proportions of lean meat and fat, and the method and degree of cooking. Consume very little, if any, processed meat, and examples of processed meat include ham, salami, bacon, and some sausages such as frankfurters and chorizo. If you eat a lot of these foods, consider swapping them for other sources of protein. So how much meat do you eat today? This graphic demonstrates how to make simple swaps to reduce your processed and red meat consumption. Here is a summary of the World Cancer Research Fund Cancer Prevention Recommendations. We hope you'll now feel inspired that eating well can be a practical and powerful way of supporting your health. And here are the references to some of the topics we have spoken about today and you will find links and relevant handouts to download or print on the website. And here are the website addresses of trusted sources of information. Thank you for listening to our webinar. We hope you found it helpful.